Hey, everybody. You are about to hear a brief retelling of the movie American Carnage. Enjoy the movie. A boy named JP dances while working his shift at a burger shop. He is shortly interrupted by a co-worker who asks him to assist cover her shift at the drive-thru since she has an essential matter to attend to. Despite his reluctance, the co-worker persuades him to do it. When he arrives at the duty position, he enjoys himself while serving the clients. Andrea, a friend of JP's sister Lily, is also in the car. JP has a great crush on Andrea, and he attempts to score a few points but is often interrupted by Lily. Andrea then reveals Lily's admittance to Columbia. JP is astonished to hear this, and Lily confirms it, instructing him to make sure he attends the party at their place. When JP finishes his job at the drive-thru, he contacts his mother, Amelia, to whine about how Lily's wonderful news is only now reaching him. Amelia claims it's nothing serious, and he should be delighted for her and return home to celebrate. She also assures him that even if she was far away, Lily would always be there for him. Much later, after hanging out with another co-worker, JP returns home, and Lily soon visits him in his room. They begin making fun of each other, but after a while, JP admits he is proud of her. Lily tries to start a conversation about how JP can attend college, but he claims it's not for him and he's just interested in hustling. He even claims that he would buy their mother a house before she graduates. Lily finds everything he says amusing and ultimately asks them to snap a picture. JP observes Lily's butterfly tattoo behind her ear as she takes the photo. He appears to be quite interested in it, but Lily warns him not to tell their mother. After that, they proceed to the living room where Lily's celebration party is taking place. Everyone seemed to be having a good time at the party, with Lily playing with cootie catchers and even sending one to JP. Amelia then delivers a statement about how thrilled she is for Lily. After she's finished, Lily takes over and tells Amelia she doesn't have to worry about traveling far away since JP will be nearby. Just as she asks JP whether he will look after things while she is away, a brilliant light flashes through the home, and police officers arrive to arrest everyone inside, including JP, Lily, and Amelia. As it turns out, the state's governor, Harper Finn, has issued an executive order to arrest illegal immigrants and their children as collaborators for failing to report their parents. Several news outlets continue to highlight the story, with political analysts claiming Finn's decision is intended to cement his base ahead of the election, particularly because migrants in the state often do not vote for Republicans. Finn stated in a statement sent to the local media that the state will have zero tolerance for illegal immigration. Things proceed rapidly, and JP, who is imprisoned in a separate area, witnesses Lily being carried away to a distant location. Days later, a representative from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security wants to meet JP. When he arrives at her office, JP recognizes the lady as one of those attempting to persuade the governor to revoke the executive order. She informs him that her efforts have failed, and illegal immigrants will be deported as soon as possible. JP is concerned that this means his mother will go, but the lady explains that she can stay if a natural-born citizen of the United States claims her. JP agrees to do it, but is told that because he is still incarcerated, it is not feasible. However, she informs him that there is another alternative. She hands him a booklet for the Elderly American Tolerance and Understanding Project, explaining that it is a community service program that can help him get free if he enrolls and completes it. Given that his only other alternative is to stand prosecution as an accomplice to an illegal immigrant, which he knows would not go well, he decides to join the program. Not long later, two authorities interview JP and ask him a few questions about himself. Eddie greets the volunteers and informs them that their role is to assist in the care of the facility's senior and elderly residents. He also assures them that if they persist with the program, they would emerge more mature and find the experience beneficial. As he speaks, none of the volunteers respond, and he then introduces Cynthia and James, the operation officers. The volunteers are then led to their lodgings before being given a tour of the alcove. During the trip, JP notices a woman in a wheelchair called Greta, but he says nothing to her. JP rapidly develops friendships with Big Mac, Camila, and the others. After the tour, they go out to lunch together. At the dinner, Big Mac complains about the cuisine, and he misidentifies Micah as a white girl, instructing her to assist him in requesting better meals. Micah clarifies that she is Argentinian. Chris then begins talking about his fear of touching the elderly individuals in the alcove. He also states he would not eat or drink anything from there since his mother is the only person he trusts not to poison him, and he only consumes her food. While the others are pitching in and asking Chris questions, Camila suddenly yells at them, stating that she is tired of hearing them speak about useless topics and that they are not at summer camp. She gets up and leaves the table, and James almost immediately comes over to offer them their uniforms. The volunteers are requested to begin their responsibilities once they have received their uniforms. While Big Mac and Camila chose the elderly to care for, JP is lured back to Greta and decides to attend to her. JP introduces himself and begins chatting to her, but he has trouble getting a reaction from Greta. Seeing this, Micah returns to assist him by offering him a book and asks him to read to her. Micah departs as he begins to read, and Greta finally speaks, saying, You will die here. 
JP pauses reading to grasp what she's saying, but while Greta screams and tries to be louder, Cynthia injects her with something that knocks her out. While JP is contemplating what has just occurred, James instructs him to back off as Cynthia drives Greta away. As JP wonders where they'll take her, Camila walks up behind him and makes a joke about how excellent he is with women. Later that day, in the dining room, a group of friends attempts to persuade Chris to eat or drink something because he has still refused to take anything other than his inhaler. Chris refuses to listen to them, claiming that he will not break. He then comes up with an idea, claiming that the program organizers are observing them from behind a dark glass and that something strange is going on at the facility. He also adds he won't eat anything because he's leaving shortly. Big Mac and JP inform Chris that fleeing, as they have been warned, is a poor idea. When Chris continues to discuss it, Micah advises him to stop talking and try it. Surprisingly, Chris rises up and attempts to unlock a closed door to escape. This proves to be a very terrible choice, as his attempts to flee set off an alarm system, resulting in some of the security officials at the alcove bringing a taser to shock him and then taking him away, while the others simply watch. That night, after curfew, JP leaves his room to use the lavatory, only to return to see an elderly woman who keeps whispering, Virgil will set you free. JP has no idea what this implies, but the lady immediately leaps on him. Cynthia is able to inject her into unconsciousness before she can do anything, and James instructs JP to return to his room. The next day, Eddie leaves the volunteers to a different ward to see some of the seniors who are in more critical condition. He also apologizes to JP and says that what occurred to him last night was caused by someone leaving the door to that ward open, allowing the elderly lady to escape. JP asks if they can also help the elders in the ward, and Eddie says James would explain him what to do if he wants to help. While the others go, JP stays, but is not happy when James calls him a name he dislikes. When Eddie observes JP becoming upset, he quickly intervenes to keep them from fighting. Following that, James requests JP's assistance in putting one of the elders on the bed. As JP assists, another patient bites his hand, and as he attempts to warn James to handle the man gently, JP goes out. He's escorted to the clinic, where he meets Lily. He asks her where she has been, and she tells him she is closer than he realizes, and they have only been a mile apart. Later that night, when Big Mac needs to attend to one of his designated seniors, Philip, he brings Greta with him, claiming she would be Philip's girlfriend for the evening. As he tries to connect the TV so that they may watch a movie, Philip's hand suddenly begins to extend out, leaving Greta horrified. Big Mac walks closer to Philip and discovers that he has stopped breathing. Philip abruptly awakens as Big Mac looks at Greta to inform her, and his entire body begins stretching and twisting violently. This continues until his body reaches its capacity and he dies. The next day, Eddie tells the volunteers about Philip's death, claiming he doesn't know what occurred yet. After that, he asks James and JP to accompany him. He leaves them to view the alcove's owl, named Virgil. He claims Virgil is the alcove's guardian, and the owl witnesses everything that happens. Eddie then tells James and JP that he senses enmity between them and that they should put aside their disagreements and hug it out. While they hug, James informs JP that he hasn't forgiven him yet, and JP reciprocates, saying he doesn't mind and has an ulterior agenda. It turns out that while hugging James, JP obtains the key to the ankle monitors and uses it to turn off and remove the device during curfew. He then calls the others and unlocks their phones as well. They all then proceed to the pool, where JP and Micah continue to converse and spend the night together. The next morning, Big Mac compliments JP on hooking up with Micah, and as they converse, JP is distracted again by Greta playing with cootie catchers. He approaches her and inquires as to if it was given to her by someone, since his sister did the same. She doesn't say anything, but instead aims the cootie catcher at him. As he attempts to gather it, she grips his hand tightly and refuses to let go until Cynthia and James come to sedate her and transport her away. As he watches, Micah approaches him, and JP expresses concern about Greta's health. Micah downplays it, stating she's confident it's nothing major. Later that night, JP can't help but wonder what message Greta was attempting to convey to him with the cootie catcher. Suddenly, he notices that a portion of it contains the word help, and he knows she has been attempting to request his assistance. That night, he discovers a means to turn off his ankle monitor and sneaks into the new ward where Greta has been sent. He sees her and attempts to rouse her up, but she has been deeply medicated, so his efforts are ineffective. Just then, he hears noises and hides beneath the bed. Greta's dose is increased by James and Cynthia, causing her to be utterly debilitated when she wakes up. When they're finished, they leave, but are quickly interrupted by a weird sound coming from JP, who was startled by one of Lily's hands falling in his way. Cynthia says it's probably nothing, and they depart. After they've left, JP emerges and begins to examine Greta's ears. To his amazement, he notices Lily's butterfly tattoo, indicating that it has always been Lily, and she has been attempting to send him a message since she first saw him. JP is too surprised to grasp what is going on, and as he hurries out, he is met by a blow from James, who had remained behind because he thought he heard something. 
The next day, Big Mac, Camila, and Micah are concerned about JP's unexpected absence, which triggers memories of Chris. Big Mac devises a scheme to get additional information about what is actually going on in the alcove by breaking into James' office. They set the plot in action, and as they watch James leave the office, Big Mac and Micah enter, while Camila stands outside as a watchgirl. Inside the office, it takes some time before Big Mac notices a file with several names. He discovers Chris' identity and notices that he is in solitary confinement, despite his lack of understanding of what this entails. Just then, James returns, and Camila cannot keep him out for long, so he enters. Big Mac and Micah can hide till he departs again. When they walk out, Big Mac is ready to tell Camila what he witnessed when James comes behind him and instructs him to go fix the screw in the vents. As he's doing so, one of the seniors tries to injure Cynthia, but Bruce is fast to stop him, even if he pushes the guy into the ladder Big Mac is using, causing Big Mac to fall to the ground and become unconscious. Back in the alcove, JP jumps out of the chair and attempts to flee. He, on the other hand, has trouble recalling the code he witnessed the lab workers use to unlock the door. Suddenly, he recalls the lady who kept shrieking that Virgil will set him free, as well as Eddie's statement that Virgil is the gatekeeper of the alcove. He enters Virgil as the code, and the door opens. Not long later, James realizes that JP has escaped and informs Bruce and Cynthia, who are ready to inject Big Mac with adrenaline to wake him up. Since there is something more urgent, they leave Big Mac, who is still pretending to be unconscious. JP continues to go as quickly as he can, despite the fact that his body has weakened. Just before James is ready to approach him, JP runs into Micah and pleads for her assistance, but instead, she injects him with a tranquilizer, implying that she had been an insider throughout. When JP wakes up, Micah is there with Eddie, who discusses the reasons behind the program, all of which point to his and the governor's hatred for migrants. When Eddie leaves, Micah tells JP that the volunteers are frequently injected with hormones that cause them to age quickly while also softening their bodies. She also informs him that what happened to Philip is often the final stage that alerts Eddie and the others that the individual is ready to be processed for meat. Elsewhere, Camila becomes concerned about what is actually going on at the facility, and just as she wonders how she may trigger her ankle monitor to go off, Big Mac slips the key to her via the vents, as he has also escaped and is moving around in the vents to avoid detection. Camila exits her room and heads to the dining area. There, she takes another look at the black glass Chris mentioned and breaks it, only to discover a room with monitors indicating that the location is more akin to a control center where the program organizers have been keeping an eye on everyone. As she thinks about what to do next, James comes and pulls her away, following which she is likewise injected. When she wakes up, she meets JP and they make a joke about their appearance. After that, JP is outraged by Finn's remarks on TV and tells Camila that they need to leave as soon as possible. He says they'll make their move after supper. Before that, he approaches elderly Lily, who is now awake. He smiles at her and offers to get her out. Later that night, when James, Cynthia, and Micah arrive to sedate all of the volunteers in the ward, they all resist and assault the three of them. JP instantly flees, hoping to locate an exit, but Bruce stops him and strikes. While remaining in the vents, Big Mac notices Bruce attempting to kill JP and leaps down to save his pal. After that, Big Mac takes JP back to the ward. James attempts to contact JP there, but Big Mac assaults him. With this, JP is able to board a neighboring elevator with Lily and Camila. Big Mac, on the other hand, leads the other volunteers, who are now old, and beating up James and the others before leaving. When they go outside, Big Mac approaches a lady in a vehicle and asks for a phone so he may contact the authorities. However, when she sees all of the old volunteers, she becomes terrified and drives away. Meanwhile, the elevator transports JP, Lily, and Camila to the processing center, where they see Chris, who likewise appears to be elderly and in a cage. As JP is talking to Chris, Eddie enters and beats him till he passes out. He then places JP on a meat grinder and starts it on, allowing JP to gently approach the machine's blades. However, Eddie is unaware that JP is present with Camila, and while he watches JP on the machine, Camila smacks him with a board, knocking him out. She then drags JP away. Eddie does not back down, and he gets up again to assault Camila before attempting to kill JP. Chris begins stretching and twisting in the cage as he prepares to strangle JP. Fortunately, Lily is right next to the switch that opens the cage, so she does exactly that. Chris then kills Eddie, freeing JP, Lily, and Camila. When they make it out, the three of them stop in a park and fall asleep. The entire country learns about Finn and Eddie's initiative, and news outlets begin saying that Finn did it to get rid of individuals who would not vote for him. According to the news, Finn has departed the country and his burger company has been shuttered. The executive order is also withdrawn, and Amelia can be seen exiting the holding institution. Meanwhile, Big Mac arrives at the park with the other volunteers, only to discover that JP, Lily, and Camila are now unconscious. However, it turns out to be a hoax, and after they mock him, Big Mac helps them rise up and depart before returning to their houses.